twirling, right? Okay. Gotta smack it a few times. This is a pro right here, guys. He <laughs> does this for a living. Whoa, Korean church. Yongdong. Day, I'm, I'm in Yongdong. I'm in Yongdong. Yongdong. <laughs> Yongdong. Who's Yongdong? Yongdong? Who are you talking about? What? Is Palisades Park, New Jersey, low key the most Korean city in America? And what type of food are we gonna find there? Let's check it out. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fung Rose Food. Today I'm out in Bergen County, New Jersey in a place called Palisades Park, AKA Pal Park. It is a majority Korean populated city. And during the pandemic, when New York's K-Town was closed, this is where people came to drink at Pocha's. They came all the way from New York to New Jersey just to drink, cause you know, everything was shut down. And pandemic or not, you gotta get your Pocha's in. All right, so we got a lot of food to explore and I got a lot I wanna talk about. So let's go to our first spot. All right, starting off with our first spot. I'm here with my friend Chi, who lives and grew up in the area. Right now, are you an honorary Korean? Yeah, my friends make fun of me. I'm an honorary Korean, so I'm gonna help you out and show you around Pell Park today. The best namyeong, aka cold buckwheat noodles that I'm ever gonna have. Yeah, it's really hot today, so we'll start off with some mul naengmyeon, and they have some specialties here. We're at Sambong naengmyeon. Um, yeah. It's part of the twin buildings. All right, so. Chi, so starting off our trip, I wanted something refreshing and light. We have what is supposed to be the best namyeong, aka Korean cold buckwheat noodles that you could possibly get here out in Palisades Park. Um, they have locations out in Georgia, Dallas. I mean, I can already tell the setup is looking different. This is the Hue namyeong, and then this is the Mom namyeong, aka the water namyeong. You know, a place is good when there's a lot of old people sitting in here. Yo, this is not some hype beast young spot, all right? This is like old people approved. This is Ajima approved. Yeah. I have raw fish, spicy sauce, fresh noodles. Ooh! Nen young. You said put the mustard on? Let's do extra mustard. Dude, right off the bat, I didn't have nem young when I went to Korea. But I gotta say, that is the best one I've ever had. Those noodles, they're super thin. It feels like angel hair noodles, but they're super soft, chewy, a little bit bouncy. I loved it, man. Okay, the manager here made sure we got the kalbi tong. He says it's also very special. Kalbi tong. Soup is really light. So glad we got that. I don't know if you guys could tell earlier in the video, I was almost losing my voice. So this is key right now. <laughs> All right, wrapping it up here at Sambong Nemyeong. We have this green scallion kimchi, and this is going to be called pa kimchi. Purple rice, pa kimchi, regular kimchi, and kalbi. If you're hungover in Paul Park, I definitely recommend getting these two combos. Andrew, you hungover? It's a Tuesday, Chi. <laughs> Yuksu. See how milky that is? I'm, I swear I'm not hungover. I'm just saying I'm losing my voice. Because mm. I was hungover this weekend. Mm. It's a Tuesday, people. Come on. Dude, I could put noodles in that right now and just eat it as is. That broth is so rich. It's a little bit spicy. Kind of has like a little bit of like pepper in there. Mm. Pal Park is off to a great start. All right, our next spot is the newest, most, I guess, highest end and cool cafe in the area. We're still on Broad Ave. It's called The Blossom. Chi, why is this spot significant? This is actually one of my favorite spots. It has like a variety of food. It's also a cute date spot. So if you ever date a Jersey girl, definitely take her here. Blossom. Let's check it out. Okay, Swan, um, can you describe like what makes this dopoki like rice cake stew like more special than other ones? So what's what's inside of it is like it just doesn't have regular rice cakes. It has cheese rice cakes also inside and then variety of the fish cake. Oh these have cheese inside. Whoa! <laughs> You said the chubby ones yeah, got cheese the inside. Ones got cheese. <laughs> ah, they got cheese rice cakes. All right, that's new. I'm looking forward to it. And um, what's on top is the fried uh, fried udang, fried fish cake. Mm, okay. Kimbap. Kimbap, your favorite kimbap. What, what makes this different? So this is a tonkatsu kimbap, and our kimbap is known to have very little like rice. Okay, and this is a traditional one, right? Yeah, more traditional. Like the original. Is that one a little bit more new school? Yeah, it's more new school. Blossom, Blossom Cafe. Cafe. I love it so much. <laughs> when the girls just dance, just... they're in a different world, okay? So this is my first time getting the cheese rice cake right here. I'm biting half. 
Yo, that's really good. Guys, this glass noodle mandu is actually really, really good. This is one of my favorite mandus I've had. It's super peppery inside, and it kind of tastes, it's kind of like a japchae, except a little bit more like eggy and spicy. So it's got pepper on the inside, noodles on the inside, and it's fried, and then it's just all spicy on the outside. That is a five out of five. My favorite tteokbokki I've ever had, actually. Because, mm, uh, like, I was, I was telling her earlier, I'm actually not a fan of tteokbokki oh, in man. general, but that one's really good. Chi, you said that this is the best kimbap I may ever have. I'ma see. I'ma judge this because I've I've had the kimbap in Korea before. Right outside of the hotel that we were staying at, there was like a new uh, designated kimbap spot. So, <laughs> what does it mean? Exactly right. The ratio between egg and pickled veggies wrapped up in a thin layer of rice. I gotta say, that's a good kimbap. Katsu kimbap. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna roll with the original. Right? Okay, we got dessert here. We got the mm. pot bing su, but this is a little bit different. Why is this different than other bing su's that you may have had? They said their ice is made with milk. So I think that's gonna give us more flavor than like just basic mm. ice that and most places get. This is a mango cheesecake bing soup. Go for it. Hold up, mm. you're saying there are pieces of cheesecake in the mango <laughs> bing soup. Okay, <laughs> I got it. I know why, I know why you gotta take a date here. Mango, mango cheesecake, cheesecake bing soup. Honestly, okay. there's like pieces of cheesecake mixed in with my bite, so yeah. I can't really tell what I'm eating. She is raving about, I've never seen a kimbap like this in my life. Whoa. Oh my God. It's like a tteokbokki pizza. Oh my God. Tim and Kwan. It's one of the most popular Chinese Korean restaurants. Now I noticed there are a lot of Chinese Korean restaurants here. Uh, they got some dishes here that I've never had before. I like this style of food. I know they eat in the Northeast of China, like in Dongbei, but I gotta check it out. All right, so you know, I don't really read Chinese very well, but I know that character. That means big, ah. But if you look at the menu here, I will tell you this, aesthetically, it definitely looks like a Chinese menu. It's looks like a, a standard Chinese restaurant. Um, but they have some orange flavored beef, Mongolian beef. So a lot of it you're gonna think is like, oh, this is like Americanized Chinese food. But they have some dishes here that are like, a, they have like a beef and chive dish with the bows that Swan was telling us about. They got jajangmyeon, of we course. We have to try the jajangmyeon. And they have different styles of jajangmyeon. All right, and just to be clear, jajangmyeon originally comes from China. No, <laughs> no, don't try to Some take it. Some people may argue You know that. what, you know what, there, there's no argument. I looked into it, trust me. Yeah. Guys, it's Google all good, Seto. it's all good. We'll just clean that one. But are you are you the owner? Yeah. Nishi Lao Ba? Oh, cool. Where, where are you, are you from Dongbei? No, we're from Sandong. Sandong? We're from Huachao. Huachao. That's why we're born in Korea. Uh-huh. And immigrant here. Oh, my mom is a Yantai person. Really? Yeah. Korean dishes, right? That probably um, the mm. origins are from China, but Koreans do it a little differently. This is eaten oftentimes in uh, Dongbei and Shandong, like the northern part. In Shandong, there's certain parts of the province of Shandong. It's not as north as Dongbei is, but the peninsula of Shandong is actually really close to South Korea, so there is actually a lot of crossover right there. This is sauteed jiu tai, which is chives with beef, and then you get the bun. Chow jiu tai. I love chives. And it's a thing that a lot of Chinese more in the North eat. That's such a good snack. Yeah. A really good snack. And you gotta get your greens in too. Mm. Peel this open, yeah, roll it out. Mm. Make my own new dish. You're definitely doing it wrong. <laughs> All right, so this dish in Chinese is tang su ro. And then in Korean it's tang su yok. All right. You know what's interesting? This word for yolk mm -hmm. is the same word in Cantonese for meat. Mm -hmm. So there's like certain words from Cantonese that are more like Korean, and then there's certain Mandarin words that are more like Korean. Mm -hmm. Anyways. You know, so you know what's the spicy sauce right here? And then dip another one, one more time here. Oh. Wow. Like this, you can. Uh, oh, I'll no, dip it, I'll dip it. it. Okay. What's in the sauce? Yeah. 
vinegar, what soy is sauce. Vinegar, and vinegar, vinegar and soy sauce. So, and some pepper, yeah. chili pepper. Okay, so this is a vinegar, soy sauce, mm -hmm. and chili pepper mix. And a lot of Koreans, they like to take this and dip it a second time. All right. Oh, this is so good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Here I have the spicy jajangmyeon. Okay, I'm gonna lay this on top. Now, when she was saying that the Chinese version is actually more of a lighter brown sauce, that is true for certain regions, but the northern zhajiangmian in China actually looks more like this, so it's a darker bean paste. Giving credit to, as the oh, founder it of- definitely came from the northern China. Definitely. Oh gosh. This is another dish you don't want to wear a white tea while eating. But you know, like I said, you gotta take risks in life. Spicy jajangmian. Fancy with spicy pork. Yo. Okay, so real quick, I bumped into the daughter of this restaurant, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> Lindsay, nice to meet you. What's your friend's name? Alexis. Alexis, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet um, you. So you're Chinese, but your parents are from Korea, and they yeah. run this Chinese Korean restaurant. Yes, they do. Yeah, like the funny thing is, growing up, a lot of my friends were Korean. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, like, I had to explain this whole thing about how, like, I speak Chinese at home, but my parents speak Chinese and Korean to me. So it's like they always found it interesting, but like a lot of my friends are Korean. Uh -huh. um, but like I'm still working on learning Korean, but like Chinese, you know, is where it's at. Uh, which culture would you say you're more a part of at this point in your life? Like, are you spending time in this particular, like in between Chinese Korean culture or Chinese culture, like which you would more find in like Flushing or Chinatown, New York, or you know, other places like that, or is it more Korean? I honestly have to say it's a pretty equal balance. It, like depends on like what like section of my life we're talking about. Like food wise, I love Korean food. Okay. Like kimchi jjigae is like my favorite. <laughs> um, but then like I spend a lot of time like when my parents are off, we go eat in Flushing and whatnot. Oh, okay. So like, we enjoy a lot of dim sum and like a lot of like authentic Chinese food. And then language, like it's really a mixture of both. Like I yeah. speak Chinese, but my mom speaks a good amount of Korean to me. Oh. Um, so even though I can't really speak Korean, like I'm still trying to learn, but right, right. Um, a lot of it is just like a mixture. Yeah. Um, so there really isn't like one over way. I mean, you're part of the Chinese diaspora. It's, it's, it's funny because like, I think this Chinese Korean kind of crossover is like not as common. So people don't think about it, but actually there's a lot of like Chinese Vietnamese people, yeah. like Chinese people from Vietnam. So that's like more of what I'm familiar with growing up. Uh -huh. But later in my life, I met people who were like the Chinese Koreans, right? Uh -huh. Like the Chinese from Korea. What, what are your favorite uh, Chinese Korean dishes out of these three? Um, definitely the jajangmyeon. Like grow, obviously growing up, I have easy access to jajangmyeon. Right. So like whenever I'm like around this area, like I always have jajangmyeon. I also like tang siyuk. It's right is, there. Is the spicy jajangmyeon, is that the is that the I always one? That's get the, the spicy jajangmyeon. <laughs> yeah, I have to say the it's The younger gen. See, that's why she said the younger generation, because she she knew you ate it. I've had the Korean <laughs> jajangmyeon maybe like seven, eight times in my life. Decent amount of times, right? Mm -hmm. Enough to, this is by far the best one. The northern jajangmyeon from China that I'm talking about, it is a lot darker, it's a lot uh, heavier. Uh, more robust fermented bean flavor. This is a little bit smoother, but this is turned up than the other ones that I've had. So I would say this is the best Jaja Man I've ever had. You guys gotta check the spot out. Chi, what was your favorite one? I mean, I liked all of them, but Tang Siok, I don't think it could be like, Anyone else could beat this one. Okay, so that's the yeah. best Tang Su Yolk. Five out of five on the spicy Jaja Man, for sure. And your shirt's sure clean. The video's not over yet. There's still plenty of time to splatter something on this, but yes, clean for now. All right, I know it is 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, but we are outside of the most popular pocha. I have a lot of friends from New York that were going here during the New York shutdown because Jersey was more open because they needed to, you know, still get their soju fix in. So explain to them, Michelle, what a pocha is. A pocha is an outdoor kind of Korean a uh, drinking spot that you can go to where also here in Jersey uh, you get a fraction of the price compared to New York City so I mean you get just as good quality food you get just as f***ed up but fraction of the price <laughs> okay so I mean it's worth the trip just don't drink and drive you get f***ed up for a fraction that's good mm -hmm. I like the tagline tell me about the history of this spot because this spot is like huge but it used to be like oh, something yeah. else yeah, I mean, this was a staple diner in Powell Park. Uh, it's been there for years, and then after that, it's transformed to six different places. Wait, it was an American diner? Yep, mm -hmm. American diner. So this used to be an American diner, and maybe this is one of the things that, I don't know, made some of the older Palisade Park 
residents mad. Not all of them. I'm sure they're great people, but yeah, so it was stuff like this. The diner's <laughs> gone, now it's a pocha. I mean, it's transformed about six different times. This pocha, we'll see how long it lasts, but I mean, I feel like it's been cursed since then. Wow. What a plug. <laughs> you said it's cursed. <laughs> so song pocha here on Broad Ave. All right, so our next spot is Wild Pink. It's super aesthetically focused. It's a relatively new cafe. It's got a lot of like cool little treats. We're gonna try some egg bread. They got croffles, which are like croissant waffles. And then they have some of these drinks. I mean, this spot is beautiful. When you take a look inside, you don't feel like you're still in Jersey. It almost makes you feel like you're in New York City. I have a matcha latte with strawberries at the bottom. I'm mixing it up. This is a strawberry uh, aid, which is strawberry bits and some soda. Cheers. Oh, that's good. That's almost like a dessert, though. It's refreshing. Koreans also love AIDS, I realize. Fruits and soda, you mix it together. All right, so I love how, like, spots, like in Pal Park, like Wild Pink, they're taking things that are really popular and well-known in Korea and bringing it here. So this is the egg bread. I've never had this before. Now, it's, I think the concept is pretty simple, but I think having your whole breakfast compacted into, like, a little, like, muffin shaped bread. I think that's pretty interesting. And you said you saw this on the streets of Korea. Yeah, yeah. So don't make it like in the mold. How do you make it? Is it kind of like a takoyaki, you know, like? like it's, it's not as beautifully displayed like this because you're in the street, you're making it real quick. People want to grab and go. So it's on like a skillet grill, like on the mm -hmm. tiaki and they flip it. You see the egg going in motion. Okay. It's really crazy. It's an art and science all in one. Kerang bang. <laughs> He's saying bong. Bong. Kerang bang. Bang. You got it. Bang. 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 I say, you know what, as, as poor. All right, can you paint me a picture? Where am I eating this in Korea? Am I, uh... In, in the streets. In stru what Maybe street? What street? What neighborhood? Gangnam, Hongdae, where? Hongdae? Yongdong. I'm, I'm in Yongdong. I'm in Hongdae. Yongdong. <laughs> Who's Yongdong? Yongdong are you talking about? What Shout out to the Yongdongs out there. Uh... <laughs> All the dogs. Egg bong. Mmm. <laughs> This is the true Egg McMuffin. Oh. It's a egg in the shape of a muffin. I don't know if they were inspired by the Egg McMuffin, but this is truly a egg in muffin form. A whole damn egg. This is the hot dog croffle, a croissant waffle. What's hot dog? Like what flavor is that? Oh, it's, it's not necessarily a flavor, but it's a texture of the bread. So you can think about it as the best way is like a croffle, right? Because you get the flaky croissant on the outside. <laughs> it's hot, it's so hot. <laughs> You hear that crunch? Yeah, hot that is like cinnamon. Ice. A Korean style croissant waffle. Yep. Hot dog croffle. Mmm. The chewy texture <laughs> that a cinnamon roll doesn't have, but the crunchy exterior and the nuts, the pine nuts to be exact. Mm -hmm. And they put a wow. little bit of like the frosting on mm. top, which is a different mix because Koreans usually don't do that, but we're in America. Guys, I think I know, uh, I think croffles are a relatively new thing, but you guys gotta check this one out. It was super fluffy, soft, crispy, still had that chewiness, um, very good snack, and it was super fresh. All right, last but not least, I got the mugwort drink, and mugwort, it sounds kind of weird and uh, nasty. I don't know, really know what comes to mind, but it's actually a Korean herb that's supposed to taste a little bit more like a robust matcha. Okay, so it's gonna be stronger, but you have an espresso, you have the mugwort, and then you have the cream on top, so. Korean herbs. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like a deeper, a little bit more bitter matcha. No, it's stronger. And I burp, my bad. I burp a lot, actually, I do. I take in a lot of air. That is something I do, actually. You gotta it's my more thing. flavor when you yeah. get air in there. Yeah, because I have to make space because it's like bloated and I release it and I can mm -hmm. drink more. And the herbs is helping you on the inside out, right? Mugwort, if you're down, if you want to try a stronger matcha. All right, my question to you guys is, do you think mugwort, with that name, can compete with matcha? I say matcha takes the cake. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, but this was a really interesting dish. I, I expect you guys to, I, I would really recommend you guys try this if you've never had it, especially if you like matcha. All right, on to our next spot. All right, Dan, behind the camera. Uh, I asked you about the Arirang rice cakes. Can you explain to me real quick? Yeah. These are the rice cakes that you eat on New Year's. On New Year's Day, you're gonna get this. All right, it's not New Year's, but this is some traditional Korean stuff that like, you know, I don't see very often. So I'm gonna go in and buy it. 
Okay, so I'm inside of Arirang rice cake and I'm trying to look for some very traditional snacks. This is a traditional Korean candy and the lady warned me. I wanted to buy it, but she was like, whoa, uh, watch out for your teeth because it might rip out your teeth. So I'm, I'm gonna back off, but but I wanted to show that. And then here, I'm gonna get this traditional cookie and then I'm gonna get these mugwort rice cakes, you know, which is gonna be kind of like mochi, but you know, Korean style. So get these two things. Okay, Chi, I know you are not Korean, but you grew up out here. So which one of these traditional Korean snacks have you had? I've had these guys. Okay, so you can eat these during New Year's, but you don't have to. And usually you'll roll them in brown sugar. That's what Dan just told me. But mm -hmm. I wanted to get these because this is a, a mugwort one. Well, I've already had mugwort twice. So this is mugwort town. All right, mugwort, mugwort rice, rice cakes. Oh. <laughs> Yo, that exploded. Mmm. Mmm. That's like sesame honey inside. Very sweet, kind of chewy. It, it tastes like a lot of the kind of East Asian rice cakes, whether it's um, Chinese like Tang Yuan, which is kind of uh, the soupy rice ball with the black sesame, or you have obviously mochi, and then this is the the cool duck. All right, Chi, what I'm looking at here is a traditional Korean cookie. And you don't recognize this because maybe you didn't grow up with a Korean grandmother. But Dan right here behind the camera did. Dan, your grandmother would have these on deck all the time. Korean cookie. Your grandmother might have this. Mmm. Definitely tastes like something I've had before, but that's actually not bad. It's it's not as it's not a dry cookie. It's like a moist, yeah, it's super moist dense, dense cookie. Yeah. It's definitely not healthy. No, it's, it's good. definitely not healthy. Nah, it's not healthy, but it's it's kind of good. <laughs> See if this brings you back to your childhood, dude. Whoa! Korean church. <laughs> Alright, so we're outside of a broad gourmet market. Um, it looks like a spot where you buy all your meats for Korean barbecue. And I know I'm in an Asian enclave because back in the 626 in LA, which is the Chinese zone, they'll have shops that are selling all the meat that you need for hot pot. So you got all the meats you need for Korean barbecue. And then of course in the Chinese zone, you'll have your hot pot meats. But I'm gonna take a quick look inside. You got a family gathering in Pal Park, mm -hmm. all right? You're doing Korean barbecue. Which meats are you getting? Starting off barbecue with some brisket. Okay, brisket. What, what about ribeye? Ribeye, are we doing ribeye? Um, you can skip the ribeye. Okay, so these store stew short ribs, are these gonna be for like kalbi tong? Yeah. The, the okay, soup. she said yes. I said kalbi tong, and then the lady said, yeah, that's the meat for the kalbi tong. <laughs> so this is the regular kalbi, okay? Pork belly. And <laughs> I need to date a Jersey girl, okay? I need to go to the Blossom Cafe with her, okay? <laughs> Guys, if you need to start your own Korean barbecue restaurant or you're having like a big Korean Family barbecue gathering. at home, you got your kimchi, big tubs, all different types of kimchi. You have your own kimchi brand that you're a part of. Mm -hmm. Guys, check out Hometown Kimchi. You guys know the spot if you need to get your Korean barbecue on. What better way to end off our Pow Park journey by coming to one of the most famous late night pochas here. It's so famous and was so important that during the pandemic, when New York's Koreatown was completely shut down, a lot of the people who still wanted to get their Korean drinks in and get their soju fix and their pocha fix in, they came to places like this. Exit 201, let's see if I walk out of here sober. Who knows? I don't. Yes, not mine, not mine, not mine. Not mine, just borrow it. Just... All right, everybody, I'm standing here with Josh, uh, the owner of Exit 201 and you guys um, this is started by your family and you guys have like kind of a story of like You know you guys were struggling at first. Could you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we actually started this place um, in 2013 uh, with the name of mariachi some of you might, guys might know it actually didn't turn out so well and um, We had to progress a little bit We had to figure out what the customers wanted what the town wanted uh, in terms of drinking nightlife food and then we eventually um, evolved into establishment like this. And um, you know, we're proud to be here at this time. All right, Josh, we got a whole lot of food on the table. Now this is all food that I can order while I'm drinking here at Exit 201, right? Right, so this is, uh, so this is like a typical type of food that people order while they drink. Okay. So, which one is this? What's this dish called? So this is called a seafood jjampong tang. Okay. So this is like a typical spicy soup that you'll see at, um, Korean Chinese mm. restaurant, mm. right? Yo, I noticed that there's kind of a lot of like Chinese Korean dishes and restaurants here. 
Yeah. Like I know that that was always a thing, but it, it just seems like maybe in Powell Park there, there's even a few more than I expected. So what a lot of people don't know is um, a lot of Korean foods are infused with Chinese food as well. So when Koreans say Chinese food, we're thinking of it as like, you know, it's not a real Chinese food, like takeout Chinese food, but it's um, cuisine Chinese food, but it's very Koreanized. Right, right. So well, it could be cooked by the Chinese people who grew up in Korea right. or possibly Koreans who grew up in China because there is, uh, you know, a lot of that population that right. does cross over. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think initially you don't know how good the food is going to be at a, at a spot that you also get really trashed at. Right. But but the food is good here, so definitely. Yo, we got some other dishes here that I've actually never seen before. Some of these I have seen before, but this one, what is this? So this is our special um, spicy pig feet. Pig feet. Yeah. Wait, so, is this supposed to be a pig's foot? So it's supposed to be a pig leg and a foot. Oh, So there's shoot. different bones as well there. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to say. See it. This was not a pig. This is the, the leg of the pig, right? No, that's actually the uh, the foot slash the leg. I mean, in, at the end, you'll see like the toes. Oh, the okay. Thing. Josh, do you know why um, Koreans use the scissors so much? Yeah. Like it makes a lot of sense, but I'm just like, how did they arrive to using it? Honestly, I don't know if it's like a Korean thing. Um, when I started working here, I, we use it a lot more often. Um, but at home, it's not, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't think we use our knives at home. Like, so bad. I'm on some like Southeast Asian or like Sichuan flavors with yeah, the chilies. Yeah, yeah. That's really good, man. Did you guys come up with the seasoning yourself or is this kind of still based off a traditional Korean okay. dish? Um, so all the foods throughout, we don't use any special sauce, like third third party sauce on anything. So we, we house make every sauce. Mm. So the middle one that you just talked about, it is the Daechang, yeah. um, Gopchang, Makchang. Tepchang, gopchang, makchang. Right, so there's the large intestine, small mm, intestine. Yeah. Um, and it's the three, the, the three combo. That one is uh, chicken gizzards. Um, okay. It's one of our best sellers. Um, so that one goes well with, with the soju. Yeah, so I mean, the soju itself is not a, it's not a strong alcohol. Right. So it's very easy to drink. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't have like a crazy, you know, aftertaste. Yeah. So you, when you chase it, you know, instead of having a chaser with a drink, you'll take a bite of one of the foods and it kind of acquires that taste. Oh. This is your, this is your guys' own chicken and rice, like yes. your halal chicken and rice? Yes. Awesome, man. I mean, you know, they're in the East Coast, Jersey, New York. Uh, halal food is very, very popular. So I'm down, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying your guys' version. I think that's really cool. This is the Exit 201 Halal Guys version. I think it's cool that you guys have your own version. A lot of restaurants, especially like, this is probably the first Asian establishment that I've seen try to really honestly do their take on the Middle Eastern chicken rice. Right. Like, you're the first ones. All right, everybody, so we are at a poche, so we got to get to drinking soon, but my two favorite dishes that I had, and shout out to Josh, and shout out to the chefs back there, and everybody here, was the chook bar, the pig's feet, mm -hmm. and then the chempon. This seafood champon was really, really good. So if you guys come out here, check it out. What was your favorite cheese? Well, if you can handle the spicy, definitely get the chicken and rice. All right, let's go have some drinks. All right, guys, so now we're in the outdoor area of Exit 201. Yo, this is, this was like, this is packed like on the weekends. And really, it makes a lot of sense that they, they have a whole like parking lot to work with. So it's pretty tight. Josh, we have uh, some makgeolli here, yep. right? And then we have some Jinro soju. Yep. It's like, it looks like a different bottle. Is this like the higher end version? No, it's stuff? actually the same thing. It's actually like a newer one. Um, okay. But they're basically, it's, this is kind of like an old school style they just brought back. So oh, it's like, like a, a retro. Retro, okay, okay. Yep. So we got the retro gin roll bottle. Uh, can you paint me a picture? Friday, Saturday night. Is there a DJ? What music? Yes, we do have a DJ every weekend. Um, you know, we play any type of music. We call it like a hip house top top 40. So hip hop and house music and top 40 style okay. is the type of music that we have. Okay, okay. We do in court, we do put in some Korean music All as right, well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got you know, the, the BTS the... and okay. everything. The hits. You know? <laughs> the hits. Yeah. We Are we going somewhere after or is this the before or ending spot or all night? So this is where it kind of starts. So if I start at exit 201, where might I go afterwards? So we actually have karaoke right next door in within the establishment. So oh. this is, that's where everybody ends up. And we kind of use that ex as an excuse to, hey, let's sober up. Let's go sing and sober up. Whole, go twirling, right? Okay. Gotta 
smack you a few times. This is a pro right here, guys. He <laughs> does this for a living. Cheers. So this is makoli. Um, from my experience, there are two different ways to drink it. The first one is to drink it without shaking it. Um, actually gives a better, cleaner taste. So what we're gonna do is try that first. No, this is no. tea. This is like how you drink tea. This is like tea. Tea, no, no. Okay. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. I'm holding it like this. Now you're making me hold this like Now you're gonna so add. So now I'm gonna shake it. But you don't want to shake it too much because you're, you're gonna have this thing explode. So you, what you want to do is shake it a little bit. Um, you want to twirl it a little bit. Light shake. Kind of light shake. Light okay. shake. Now if you it looks more color, milky. Yes. Okay. See the color. Now it's very milky. Ending off the video in Pal Park at Exit 201. We got these last two drinks. What are they, Josh? These are our signature um, cocktails. Okay. On the clear one, we're looking at the lychee um, cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's made with vodka and um, with the lychee, um, you know, puree and also the ball in it. Oh. All right, as as I drink this uh, super sweet mango pina colada, uh, how would you compare the different Korean areas like Fort Lee and Pal Park? Because my impression of Fort Lee is that it's like the quiet, super chill K Town. It's not over 50% Korean yet, like Pal Park is. Pal Park got the Korean American mayor now. Uh, how is it different? So I would say Fort Lee is a little more diverse still um, in terms of you know having a Western and also Asian culture mixed in. But Pal Park is, you know, like you said, we do have a Korean mayor now. Um, we're, you know, they're trying to make Pal Park the new Korea town of New Jersey. But at the same time, you know, you'll be able to get both good foods and drinks in both areas. But, you know, definitely you want to check out Pal Park if you want to experience Korean culture a lot more. Fort Lee actually has some spots that are open later than Pal Park. So after there, you guys end here at 2 a.m., some people from here will go back to Fort Lee. Yes, yes. That's and if you guys want to do that, come over to me. I recommend you the spots that you should go to. But you got to come here first to exit 201 so that Josh could tell you. See, that's yep. the bait. You get yep. them because they got to come yep. here first. Fire. This is. Wow, oh, this is really good. Yeah, I don't know. Really I don't know if I should finish this thing. I can see on the cups it says it seriously says easy. easy, easier, easy. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. I think it should say drunk, stop drinking, bye. All right, everybody. Wrapping it up here at Exit 201. Yeah, Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. I learned so much about the po Chow life here. And uh, man, this Pal Park crawl has has been a journey. Mm -hmm. Woo! All right, Chi, I made it out there about 90% sober. <laughs> so sure? I'm, I'm pretty good. But everybody, that wraps it up for our Palisades Park, Bergen County, New Jersey crawl. Shout out to Chi, thank you for helping set that up. You're nice. a Pal Park native. I know you're not natively Korean, but you are an honorary Korean at this point. Um, what do you got to say about Pal Park? Pal Park helps me to like de-stress, loosen up, you know, catch up with friends, mingle, good food. But this is home. Yeah, it's home. Uh, big shout out to Chi, check out our links down below. It's not really about Pal Park versus Fort Lee. The thing I would say about Pal Park in general is that the amount of Koreans and the density allows it to kind of start to feel like a neighborhood in Seoul where like I'm walking down Broad Ave and everything is Korean and it kind of feels like a lot of the the spots are owned by people from Korea the people walking the streets are probably born in Korea a lot of them and uh, it just kind of gave me an authentic feeling I think out in Jersey you just have so much space that you can have these humongous pochas like you can't yeah, have this have in New York no. because there's literally no space, but you have this out in Jersey because you have this huge parking lot and it just kind of adds to the whole community aspect of it. So what I'm trying to say, Chi, is that after all this time and Korean friends talking to me about Pal Park, I get it now. You get it. I get it. Pal Park is enjoyable. <laughs> I, I'll, I understand it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. Shout out to Chi, shout out to everybody. Um, it was a really informative, good video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we ate a lot of great food. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought looked the most delicious. And if we left out any spots, I know we couldn't film in every spot, but you know, we tried to. I ate a lot and who knows, like maybe one of these nights, I'll come back, I'll hit you up, Chi. 
All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that. Please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and until next time, we out. Peace.